All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave here talking about uh, real music in real time for a couple of real people out there just like you and just like me. So this was still sitting around from yesterday, so I'm going to showcase it again because it's so good. This is Lena Lane's album, Neptune Blue. Holy crap, Batman. Classic rock, progressive rock, um, great vocals, great keyboard parts all over this album. Um, Eric Norlander is the guy who plays keyboards, and uh, he's he's pretty phenomenal. If you've heard Dukes of the Orient, you should check this out. Um, it's different, though, but there are some things that are somewhat um, similar uh, in the fact that there is a, is a progressive vibe going through it. So please check this out. Lena Lane, um, she's great. She's been around for a while. Um, Neptune Blue is the name of the album. It's organic. It's real. Uh, that's why I'm talking about it. And um, also, what else is real out there? ModernRetroFM.com. Modern Retro Radio playing all the music that uh, corporate radio just won't play uh, because they're told from their corporate masters what to play. And so it's just pathetic. You go out in the car and, yeah, if you have Sirius XM, you're doing better. I will admit you're doing better. But uh, if you've uh, not bought into the idea that you have to pay for radio, then um, radio is very boring. And uh, there are no chances really being uh, taken out there unless it's some mom and pop oriented radio station. So again, modernretrofm.com doing uh, the Lord's work when it comes to uh, providing a great service, great music, 24 hours a day, I might add. Now, on to this topic, which doesn't seem like a big deal, right? And then I get into the article, and I think about the video I did the other day about Guns N' Roses. And then I think about Grace Slick, right? Grace Slick said years ago, you know, rock and roll is not for old folks, all right? It's just not for old folks. And me being, you know, a little long in the tooth myself, I listen to some of the attempts out there to either recapture or kind of replicate what bands were doing 30, 35, 40 years ago. Uh, and these guys who are in their late 50s or into their 60s, or even in some cases in their 70s, there's kind of, you know, there's like one or two exceptions out there. The Rolling Stones, they've got new stuff out there. They sound really good. Um, and uh, that's that's hard to figure out. Must have been all of the the whiskey and the cigarettes just kept everything going. But uh, in the case of Guns N' Roses, right, um, Duff McKagan, who I believe is still the current bass player for Guns N' Roses, um, says that uh, Axl Rose is a bleeping master, talking about his singing and uh, his, I don't know, maybe his stage presence and what he does out there. Uh, he sings for close to three hours, and he's a bleeping master. And uh, Slash, too. Now, Slash is a very good guitarist. Um, but thinking back to what Grace Slick said about how certain people probably shouldn't be out there after a certain age. And the reason I say this is because there's such a big difference vocally between, and with this band especially, because... Axel set a very high bar with what he did vocally. And none of these bands were thinking back in 1988, you know, 40 years from now or 30 years from now, we're still going to be out here. So I better not write things in a key that I won't be able to be in when I'm 60 years old or 70 years old or whatever. Um, there are some singers, you know, it's not everybody. But this kind of music, the way it was recorded, the way the vocals were recorded, the intensity of it, um, it, you can't just do a karaoke version of this. And as Billy Joel says, um, you start throwing off speed stuff using the baseball analogy instead of the fastballs because you can only throw the fastball a couple of times during a concert and then you got to throw an off-speed pitch which means instead of going up on the note you go a little flat or you come down and then you go up again and you kind of fool the audience a little bit 
but you're not singing it the way it was originally sung. And, you know, Duff McKagan doing a lot of cheerleading here with Eddie Trunk. And I did this video the other day, so I don't think it's about me directly, obviously. Um, I'm sure people are doing videos about Guns N' Roses and their experiences going to shows. But I had a patron say to me, Dave, he was forgetting lyrics, talking about uh, Axl Rose, and he sounded awful. All right. And these people have a memory of this band. Plus, of course, they still play these songs over and over on the radio. So you hear the 1988 version of Axl Rose on the radio and you're thinking to yourself, well, I'm going to go see Guns N' Roses. So I'm going to relate this to what I know, which is the stuff from the 80s and early 90s. Is it fair to do that? I think it's fair. Look, again, Kelly Hansen says, if you can't do it at the level that it requires. <laughs> In other words, people go to the show and they listen and they think to themselves, this doesn't sound good. This doesn't sound like the band I remember listening to. And that's the problem. We go over to the Grace Slick analogy saying you hit a certain age. Number one, you look ridiculous up there. And in some cases, people do look ridiculous up there. No offense to Mike Reno. Here's a, here's a guy who sounds great. Um, he's not looking very rock and roll these days. Lead singer for Loverboy. Uh, same with Vince Neil. So I'm on stage the other night with uh, Sammy Hagar. Had a few too many uh, Cabo Wabo margaritas or whatever, and it's not good. It's not pretty. And you, you tend to think to yourself, okay, how much longer can these guys do this? My answer is if they're selling tickets and people are showing up for the shows, they will go out there and do it. Now, in the case of Guns N' Roses, maybe they ought to go um, the route that Kiss has gone, where they bring in some vocals and they bring in some backing tracks or whatever uh, needs to be brought in, because the audience, uh, they're going to think to themselves, wow, this band, they sound better than they've ever sounded. you know. And uh, most people, after a couple uh, adult beverages, aren't going to care or they're not going to notice. Either way, both of those things are true. But, you know, Duff McKagan out there, you know, he's kicking ass. He's the best. And, you know, this is difficult. To, it is really difficult to do. And quite honestly, it isn't anywhere near the level it once was. Now, do I have sympathy for these bands that are doing this? Yes. Maybe they need to, you know, rearrange their music. Kind of like that big trend that we had years ago where everybody unplugged everything you know, unplugged and seated, you know, Eric Clapton did the unplugged, Rod Stewart, uh, Eddie Money even did an unplugged album. And um, it was good. I, I enjoyed listening to the acoustic versions of these songs. You know, sit down in a circle and try to harmonize a little bit. You don't have to hit all the high notes. You don't have to look ridiculous out there. Um, some people obviously don't want things to change. They want to pretend that uh, they still look good at whatever age they're at. Um, they want to pretend that there's been no aging, right? Nobody's aged at all. Everybody's fine. Axel sounds the same. Duff looks the same. And they don't. Slash kind of looks the same. It's like Keith Richards doesn't age a lot. Slash is kind of like the GNR version of uh, Keith Richards. But bottom line here is, people, that this is not what the media sells it as you know they do these articles one after another about these older bands and they're doing great and buy tickets look i don't want to affect anyone's bottom line right so i've been told this before by people on the inside you shouldn't say negative things even if they're true because you've got roadies that need to earn an income and you've got um the band themselves they're not selling albums anymore at least new albums so this is how they need to earn a living. I get that. But man, um, it's just the truth is the truth. You know, if you listen to something and you know in your heart it's not good. I mean, it's just difficult to just lie through it and say, yeah, it's, you know, and sometimes I'll be diplomatic. I'll say for their age, 
this isn't so bad. And you could say that for Guns N' Roses, but can you? You know, <laughs> again, I think Grace Slick was probably right. And um, some some bands can do this forever. There are exceptions. The Rolling Stones, obviously. Ringo Starr, apparently. Um, and there are others. Mickey Thomas from Starship. I haven't heard him recently, but up until like the beginning of this year, I just don't understand how he does that. Um, I was talking to Jeff Scott Soto prior to our interview and he mentioned him he's like i don't get it i'm like yeah it's just it's got to be good genes or taking care of your voice i don't know how you manage to do that but uh, he he has managed to do that anyway um for new music out there uh check out this album by lena lane it's actually not that new it came out last year but um neptune blue uh it's really good it's organic it's somewhat progressive um it's classic rock sounding and uh, she's great and I had the album kicking around from yesterday, so I figured I would showcase it again. Also, Modern Retro Radio. And folks, Patreon. It's just something I need to do. I need to ask if you can do a dollar a month, two bucks a month. Um, every day I wake up, I look at the stats on my phone, and it's so depressing. It's like having you know, a stock portfolio, and all of your stocks are down. And they continue to just go down. And so I have to, you know, plea to the court here and say, if you like the content and you like the channel, if you can do a buck or two a month, um, you might not miss it. Maybe you will because the economy really sucks, but it costs so much just to do anything these days that a dollar or two, if we had, I don't know, 10% of the subscribers doing a dollar a month, <laughs> it would be a great world, uh, at least for me. And I think it'd be a good world for you because I would continue putting out content uh, and uh, I'd be thankful, which I still am, because I have some great patrons who do a lot of heavy lifting. And so I appreciate them. Uh, also, YouTube memberships, if you want to sign up for one of those as well. Um, and that's just flat out supporting the channel. There's a perk here or there with that where I will do a video every so often just for members especially if I want to cover a topic that uh, YouTube might not like a lot or something that's kind of on the inside that I want to explain to people so they understand it better. YouTube memberships uh, for that uh, particular type of content every so often. All right, folks, I am done. Maybe Guns N' Roses should be done, but people are still buying tickets, so uh, they're not going to be done for quite some time.